that's where most of my um Today I thought I would just talk a little bit about my journey so far. Basically the gist of it is that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about what I've been doing so far and what the experience has been so far. Like beginner things that I've been struggling that I think every experienced YouTuber will say that you will have to go through when you're starting a YouTube channel and kind of the things that I've been trying to keep in mind to deal with that. So first of all, what's happened so far? What I've been doing in the last couple of weeks, I have been mad binge watching content on YouTube about creating your own YouTube channel and how to create content, how to edit, how to deal with the haters, how to do this and that. And so like all the stuff that you kind of need to know before or while you're in your YouTube journey. So absolutely inhaling content about that. So that's really given me a lot to think about and also taught me a lot so far. But at the same time, it has also been very overwhelming. Like there is so much information out there, what you should do, what you should not do. Best practices, which editing software to use, what you have to keep in mind for thumbnails and titles and how many characters and this and that. And it's a lot of information. So it's kind of exhausting. So the things that I have been struggling with so far. Let me tell you what I've done <laughs> so far. So far I have released exactly two shorts and one full length video. It's not even long form content, it's like five minutes long. And basically how it happened is that I had an idea for a short while I was in the Philippines with my family and I was like, oh, this is pretty funny. Released it and then I think in a week or something it got maybe 300 something views. And I didn't have anything to compare that number to, like I didn't know if 300 was good or not. So I just thought that Oh, must be pretty easy to get this many views, at least on at least on shorts, if not regular videos. And then I released a second short, and I think that one got maybe five views. And then I also released a regular video that got, you know, at first I had it unlisted because I did not want to share it with anyone because it was the first video where I was actually talking and you could see my face and I was talking to the camera and stuff like that. And that was super scary to make something like that public. So I first had it unlisted until my dad convinced me to put it public. Right now that has like 30 views or something, most of which are from my friends and families. But yeah, so that is where I'm sitting right now. When I was making my first actual video, the biggest thought process for me is that editing is hard. It's hard. You know, these people who have so much practice, I mean, obviously they have years of practice. People go to film school, um, you know, and do editing courses and stuff. Like, of course they make it look easy. But yeah, it's, it's actually pretty hard. And not only once I decided which editing software to try and use because that was a whole thing in and of itself. You know, it took ages to try to get the smallest things to work, so that was a really exhausting process. But even before that, so deciding which video editor to use. As a total beginner, again, I have never gone to any sort of editing class, filmmaking course, anything in remotely in that direction. So I didn't even know where to start. So all I was doing was looking at articles about, you know, best free editing software because since I'm a beginner, I didn't wanna or I don't want to spend money on editing software that maybe I won't vibe with. So best free editing software, best free editing software for PC, best free editing software for iPad. You know, the pros and cons of every, edit <laughs> every editing software that you could possibly use. And then at first I tried one that my friend uses for her YouTube videos, which she has on her iPad. But I did not keep in mind that the Apple ecosystem is very unfriendly to outsiders. And the fact that my phone is an Android and my computer is a PC, it doesn't vibe well with my iPad. So it was an absolute nightmare trying to get all the footage from my PC or from my phone into the iPad so that I could then edit it. So that made me change my mind. So then I started looking at editing softwares that I could use on my PC. So then when I finally decided Decided on one, I didn't realize that the free version puts a watermark on your video. Then it was like another one and a half hours of trying to decide on another video editing software. I finally decided on Lightworks, uh, the free version, which is what I'm using right now. They do have paid and then more expensive paid version, but right now the free is everything that I need right now, especially since I'm still learning. So that is what I'm doing. That was, I think, my first big hurdle of hosting something that's not a short because shorts are easily editable on your phone, even deciding which video editing editing software you want to work with for the next couple of videos maybe took me forever. Once I finally found that and I actually got into the editing, you know, a lot of it was super trial and error. I think I spent about 10 hours on Sunday just for a four or five minute video, which is, which is to me insane. But again, I have nothing to compare it with. So I don't know if that's really good. I don't know if that's really bad. I don't know if I'm like unnatural at editing because it only took me 10 hours or if I'm actually just 
really, really slow at picking up editing and 10 hours is terrible. Like I should have gotten it in three hours maybe. I have no idea. But that's how long it took me, about 10 hours on a Sunday to edit my first ever video, which lasted about five minutes. And then I used Canva for the first time as well to do the thumbnail. The thumbnail, which I also like, I didn't take a separate picture for it. I know like a lot of YouTubers do do this and they'll take um, a whole series of photos of them doing like reaction faces and things like that for their thumbnail. I haven't done anything like that yet. So I just picked like a frame within the video that I thought might make a nice thumbnail. And then I put some text over that and that was that. And maybe that took me like 45 minutes on Canva because I took an absurdly long time trying to decide which font to use. Something else that I have been struggling with is my niche. All the content that I have watched is like you had to find your niche, but other YouTubers are saying like, you know, you don't niche down too much. And other ones are saying like, oh, you have to niche down super hard if you want to be relevant or if you want to be competitive. And then other people are saying, you know, it's best to think about what your niche is going to be right from the beginning. And then other creators are saying, well, it's, you know, it's okay. Just like start making videos. And then at some point your niche will, will come out. And I think that is the one that I like the most because it saves a bit more stress and means that I don't have to worry too hard about what I'm going to make videos about now. I just need to make videos about anything because let's be honest, nobody's watching me right now anyway. There are a couple of things that I have thought about that could be a niche that I could maybe focus on. Some of the advice that I've seen is, you know, look at your YouTube watch history and that will give you an idea of what you find interesting and therefore give you an idea of the things that you can talk about because obviously the things that you find interesting are things that you are passionate about and you know it's always easier to talk about things that you're passionate about and that will you know reflect through your videos and reflect to your audience and it makes the whole process so much easier. So I went through my watch history and was like what are the kind of things that I find interesting right now and those are personal finance, general lifestyle vlogs, fitness, food, travel, self-improvement and productivity and organization. So those are the things that I find super interesting, like I could binge watch content about any of those things all day every day. But then of course there's also things that I need to think about if I want those areas to be my niche. So for example with personal finance, I feel very strongly about it. I think everybody should learn about personal finance and have a good grasp of it. But the thing is that I don't know if that can be my niche because I have zero qualifications in personal finance. Like I don't have an accounting degree. I don't work at a bank, so I have zero personal finance qualifications, so why would people want to listen to me talk about personal finance? For food. You know, I do like food, I like, you know, I like making food, I like trying food, but I don't like it so much that I want my whole channel to revolve around that. So I think it's not as big a player in my life as I think it should be in order to have a whole channel that revolves around food, if that makes sense. Also for lifestyle niche and vlogs and stuff like that. Sure, they're really nice, but I think that for vlogs, you know, you have to wait until you have an audience that actually likes you and resonates with you because vlogs are not really searchable content, I've heard. And as far as I also have heard that, you know, like the lifestyle sector on YouTube is very competitive. Fitness would also be really cool, but I'm not like a huge fitness fanatic. I don't study sports science, anything like that. So also underqualified and maybe not as enthusiastic about fitness as I should be to have a channel that revolves around it. And then for self-improvement and productivity and organization, even though I love the content that centers around productivity and organization, I really, I feel like I have to be at a certain level of just being good at these things. Like I have to be a certain level of productive. I have to be a certain level of organized before I can feel qualified to like share that stuff with an audience, which I know maybe sounds silly, but there's so much imposter syndrome, especially when I am aware that I am putting myself out there on the internet and just talking about whatever it is that I decide to talk about that I feel like I need to have some kind of official qualification like some kind of piece of paper that says you can talk about this and people should listen because you know what you're talking about but I don't know what I'm talking about this is really just me sharing what I am having trouble with so maybe other people can relate and feel less alone okay so these are three things that I'm trying to keep in mind First of all, when we're talking about editing, the fact that editing is hard and it's such a big hurdle. And something that I'm trying to keep in mind, you know, everyone says this, anything worth it will take time. Especially if you want the thing to be sustainable, it will take time and it will take effort to build. And as much as I struggle with that, something I'm really trying to internalize is to be okay with the process of learning and being okay with delayed gratification because I have never been a person who enjoys the process of learning. You know, some people like learning just for the sake of it. I learn because I want to be good at the thing 
right away. I want to be good at it right now and I don't want to wait. That's not the best way to go about it. Obviously you have to go through the process before you are good at the thing. So that's really something that I'm trying to remember. And you know, even if I am not okay with it and I refuse to be okay with it for the rest of the time that I do this, even if I refuse to be okay with not having it right away, that's not gonna change it. Just because I say, I'm not okay with delayed gratification, I want gratification right now, doesn't mean I'm gonna get it. So really, I don't have any choice except to be okay with it. So that is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to, trying to be okay with it. Second thing, finding your niche. Like I said, I've gotten a lot of conflicting, um, you know, advice from various YouTubers and blogs. The piece of advice about niches that resonates the most with me is that it will show itself in time. And right now, since I have never been to film school, I have no experience in editing. Right now, I just need to focus on making videos and putting them out there and seeing what I like talking about the most and what resonates the most with the people who end up on my video. Last thing, what will people think? If you are starting a YouTube channel right now or still maybe in the beginning stages or starting any channel on social media, I mean, I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with because also all of the content that I watch about experienced YouTubers all address the topic what will people think? And you know, the fear of what other people think. Like every single YouTuber that I've seen talks about it. So it must be something that everyone struggles with. I try really hard to keep in mind these huge YouTubers. At some point they were where I am now, you know, feeling super awkward speaking into the camera, having no idea what I'm doing, just feeling overwhelmed and lost by all of it. They were all here, which is a very comforting thought. And about what other people will think, it's hard. It's hard because I do care about what other people think of me. I think it's okay to admit that, but I think I've come to the point where I care more about what people think in a sense of like my character. Do people think that I'm a good person? That's what's more important for me now than what they'll think about this YouTube channel. There is still, you know, that part of me who, who still lives in high school or middle school. And oh my God, if someone laughs at me or says something mean, then that, you know, that would crush high school me. But you know, we're, we're past that time and maybe five months from now it won't matter. Something that is maybe good to keep in mind for things that seem really big in the moment, especially when you're, you know, about to post a video and release it into the internet, into the world, um, into all the potential for like mean comments. If something feels like a really big deal to you now, you ask yourself, will this matter in five minutes? Will this matter in five hours, five days, five weeks, five months, five years? If you spill like a glass of milk or something and oh my God, the floor is such a mess. And you're like, oh no, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that. But then, you know, just like take a second, ask yourself, is the fact that I spilled a glass of milk on the floor gonna matter in five minutes when I've cleaned it up? No. And then you apply it to like bigger things as well. You know, you zoom out as much as you need to to distance yourself from it and feel like it's actually not that big a deal. So let's say you get fired from your dream job. Oh, that stings, that hurts. You've worked so long, you've worked so hard to get this position and now, you, now you've been fired from it. It feels awful, awful. So it's definitely gonna matter still in five minutes. In five minutes, you'll probably still be in floods of tears. Five hours, ditto, five days, ditto. Five weeks, maybe not anymore. Maybe in five weeks, you'll have another job, one that you like even better. Five months, even more likely that you'll be in a good place again. And you know, the memory of being fired from this dream job, maybe it wasn't really your dream job. Maybe you thought it was your dream job, but it actually had like really shitty pay and stressful work hours and stuff. And the place that you're at now is even better. So you zoom out as much as you need to, to distance yourself from the issue and maybe get the feeling that it's not really that bad. So when I post this, if someone says something mean, or even if it gets like two views, maybe I would prefer that, I don't know, then that will sting in the short term. But then I ask myself, is the fact that maybe someone wrote a mean comment or the fact that zero people watched my video, is that really gonna matter to me in five weeks? Is that gonna matter in five months? Probably not. Is that gonna matter in five years? Definitely not. So it's that kind of thing that gives me a little bit of perspective and makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with what I'm doing right now, which is making myself vulnerable. And that's what we're all doing when we're starting a YouTube channel because we're putting a part of ourselves out there for the entire world to see. Not that they're gonna see it because there's so much other shit to watch, but the fact that there is potential for people to see it is scary. And the fact that any of you who are going through it are going through it is, is very brave. And that's already something that we can be proud of. So that is the end of this video. I hope that this provided some insight on what the very, very beginning of someone's YouTube journey looks like. I would love it if I can look back 
at this video in a year from now and laugh at it and be like, oh my God, I can't believe I was so worried. That's so cute. But I also hope whoever is watching this and is in the same position that I am, you're just starting out. It's really scary. It's really new. Hopefully you can also get some comfort from seeing this and seeing my side of the story and the struggle and know that we are in the same boat and hopefully that gives you a little bit of comfort. Thank you and I'll see you guys in the next one.